Hey, yo, whoa, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Keen Japes video. Now, originally what I had planned today was to go out and shoot this really dope production, make this cool video for you guys on a fairly new camera that I acquired. Uh, but what happened was the weather, you know, turned for the worse and it started raining and the 45 mile per hour gusts just started blowing my freaking face away and so I couldn't go out and exactly shoot the video. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a quick impromptu uh, Q&A that I asked the good folks over on Instagram all of you guys to send me some questions about you know whether it's film related or photography related in general and man we got a lot of questions to uh, go ahead and get off to so folks without further ado I'm gonna go ahead and do this Q&A before this video goes to a one hour episode let me just go ahead and get started now folks I want to give you guys a quick little disclaimer there is so many on here but a lot of them are repeated questions so if I don't get to answer your question please don't feel discouraged but I'm gonna try my best to make sure that I answer everything truthfully and correctly so folks let's go ahead and get started so the first question reads, how old are you and where do you live? I am 19 years old and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. You know what it is. Next question, Ryan Gatora asks, what photo books have you been reading at the moment? Now, I've been stuck on two photo books this entire week, um, and I try to do them weekly, but I just couldn't put these two down in particular. The first one here is The Americans by Robert Frank. Classic book. If you guys are street photographers or you guys are like documentary photography, you know, this book will suit a lot of your um, a lot of what you want to see. Uh, so Robert Frank is an amazing photographer, and I've heard that this book right here uh, kind of inspired what modern day street photography is. And so if you guys want to look into this stuff, I highly recommend you guys check it out. The Americans by Robert Frank, an absolutely killer book. And the second book that I have here is called France is a Feast. Shout out to Drew for copying this for me. Now this book right here is about Paul and Julia Child's uh, photographic journey. And a lot of the images that you see in here take place in France. And one of the things that I really do enjoy genuinely about the way Paul photographed things was that he incorporated light and shadow, but also using subjects as well. Which if you look at my work is, you know, one of the reoccurring themes that you see within it. And so this book really stood out to me for those reasons. And I've absolutely been enjoying them. And it's really cool to go through these books, um, see what we like, and feel inspired by it. So definitely, I highly recommend you guys check this one out. This is called France is a Feast. Like I said earlier, it documents the photographic journey of Paul and Julia Child. So those are the two books that I've been stuck on. Joe Siege War Photography says, have you tried out Kodak T-Max P3200 yet? Now to answer your question, no I have not. Uh, just because I can't get my hands on it just yet. I already pre-ordered on some of these websites and I have a couple shipments of that stuff coming in. Uh, but when Kodak releases it, definitely man, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it. I'm super juiced and I'm super anxious. Kodak, where are you at y'all? Come on, come up with that 3200, let's go. Negativity asks, can you do more thrift camera videos and do a room tour video? Now thrift camera videos, I really want to do. Um, I'm actually planning to try to do some within the next couple weeks. Uh, but the issue is that around our, around our area in general right now, uh, thrift stores are finding out that these film cameras have value and they're, they're jacking up the prices. Um, and so, you know, that's going to make it hard to do these videos with to find good deals. Yuichi Roundtree says, hey man, for the Q&A, besides the one video with the Yashica Mat 124G, have you often done night photos? And if so, how do you feel about taking them or the style? Now, I have done nighttime photography before, but it was more landscape and it was kind of just to experiment with uh, what film can really do. Now, I really, really, really do want to go out and try to shoot some street photography um, at nighttime. And with that P, the P3200 that we just talked about earlier, um, I think it'll be a great addition to, you know, being able to capture what's out there uh, when you are shooting film. So yeah, I, I want to do more, but I haven't really done a lot of nighttime street photography. Um, and the style of it, the way I feel like, you know, nighttime street photography works is you know, you got to be kind of careful with what you shoot, especially at night, because first of all, it's nighttime. Somebody could just come up behind you and rob you. Right. And also uh, subjects at night, I feel are a little bit more sketchy or they feel they feel a little bit more alert about what's around them. And so you got to stay safe and you got to make sure that people know what you're doing and that you're not trying to cause any harm. So uh, when it comes down to nighttime street photography, damn near Yuichi Roundtree. Let's go do some of that. Right. You're local, bro. So hit me up. Let's go out and shoot. Aeum Lifestyle says, uh, do you scan your own film or send it out? And if you do at home, what do you use hardware slash software? I do scan my own film. And one of the things that I used, first of all, is this thing. Whew, these are lifesavers. And basically this is just a little rocket blower. You guys hear that? 
and uh, that's gonna get all the dust off of your film. It also has this really nice soft tip uh, brush, so you can kind of brush the negatives, but I don't recommend that. I kind of just, you know, use the little rocket blower. Um, as for my scanner, just to answer it all, I have an Epson uh, 3590, which is a dinosaur of a scanner, and it takes about like two hours to scan a 36 exposure roll, but uh, I use what I have and I use what I could. Now, as for the software, it's pretty much just the Epson software, uh, the standard one that comes with it. Murphy's Film asks, when are you giving me the best? Of <laughs> Good question, Garth. Uh, come to the States, man. We'll see. We'll see when we get here. Ooh. Frank's pick says, how to tell if a film camera works or not? Now that question is a loaded question for a number of reasons, but the first thing you want to look for is the mirror. On an SLR camera, does the mirror work? Does it, when you hit the shutter, does it even advance forward? And then after I check if that, you know, if that works, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and try to check all the shutter speeds. So I'll start at like five hundredths of a second, one one thousandth of a second, then I'll go down to like one one fiftieth of a second, or sorry, one sixtieth of a second, and then go down to one thirtieth, and then just continue on and see if the shutter speeds sound accurate. And at that point, if all the shutter speeds are working and the camera feels functional, um, then I'll go ahead and make the purchase. James McNeely sixty four asks, "How well do film cameras withstand the rain? And also, when is your next zine going to be made?" So, film cameras in the rain. Good question, James. Is a really weird thing because some cameras uh, like some of the Olympus point of shoots have weather sealing and I know a lot of other film cameras necessarily don't and so I kind of tested that out myself so I brought out the Minolta X700 once and I didn't intend to get it wet it just started raining that day uh, but it got pretty wet it got genuinely wet I highly recommend you guys don't though uh, just to make sure that you guys are safe, but I would generally say that you know if you get a couple of raindrops on it, your camera is going to be fine. Uh, but if you end up soaking it and the electronics get all get all wet and stuff like that, uh, expect that your camera is going to go bad. So folks, if your camera is not weather sealed, uh, just please be very careful with it. Otherwise, you know, just don't even bring it out in the rain. <laughs> Part two to James's question is when is the next zine going to come out? Uh, I'm still thinking of working up some ideas for the next zine. Also, I'm trying my best to learn all of the little issues and gripes that I've had and asking you guys, the people who bought the zine, uh, you know, what I can improve for my next one just so I can learn from it. So uh, once I get that down and I have a basis to what I need to improve on and what I can improve on, um, I'll go ahead and move forward with the zine. And uh, like I said, my mind's always thinking, I'm gonna be thinking of new ideas pretty soon. All right, moving forward, Faraz Kurshid asks, what inspires your aesthetic and how do you maintain that in a body of work? Excellent question for us. Now, what inspires my aesthetic? For me, I like like I like architecture and stuff like that. But most importantly, recently, because um, I took it upon myself to challenge myself to shoot more black and white, uh, you really have to work with shadow and light. And so what I've been doing is uh, like particularly like, for example, this photo, uh, I've been trying to incorporate my subjects with light, uh, incorporate my subjects with a background and really just have them uh, kind of interact and play with each other. Now, the question Faraz asks is, how do you maintain that in a body of work? And you kind of got to develop an eye for what, what you want and what pictures you want to want to take um, there's a saying that you know you need to develop the eye before you develop you know your, your camera skills and stuff like that and so I completely stand by that 100% um, you know to make good photos you have to see good photos you have to start you know picking apart different things like wow that's a really nice bench and look at the light that it's coming off maybe if I go ahead and crop down on that and then somebody walks by with their shoe I can get a really interesting uh, or interesting composition and interesting photo uh, you really have to just develop an eye for what you want to put in your frames and then uh, just go after it just hunt for it Andrea Vizu asks, what's the cheapest way to shoot film? I already have a film camera, but film is getting expensive. I'm gonna give you, Andrea Vizu, a three, like three part answer to your question. First is, when you buy film, you know, try to shoot expired film. If it expired in 2015, that's pretty much still pretty much fresh. You know, go for it and try to shoot that. You can save a lot of money buying that stuff on eBay. Um, also, if you are gonna be, you know, shooting lots and lots of film, why not go ahead and make the investment to buy your own developing chemicals and your own equipment and develop it at home. You know, you will save tons and tons of money uh, by, you know, investing in that stuff. And when you do it yourself, you enjoy the process a little more, I feel like. Fern Rodriguez asks, name your most desired specs and a point of shoot if you could create your own. An example, an example, <laughs> manual ISO settings, focal length, f-stop size, colors, etc. Fern Rodriguez. So if I had to make my own point of shoot specs wise, first of all, I would have a 35 mil, a fixed 35 millimeter lens. 
and I would have it go down to like 1.7. Um, as for manual settings, I would want to be able to, to make sure that it has an automatic flash built in, but you can turn it off because a lot, my gripe in a lot of point issues is that some of these flashes, we can't control them ourselves and they kind of just pop up randomly and creatively, you know, that can be a restriction because you might not want to use flash at certain times. As for manual ISO settings, you know, I want to be able to, uh, set my ISO so I can push film. A lot of point issues generally, the, I think the highest I've seen goes up to like 1600 and that was on the Lomo LC. But I want to have a camera that can go up to maybe 32 or even 6400. So, you know, that's pretty much all I want in a point of shoot. And I feel like there are already cameras that can do that out there. Uh, but yeah, I probably would get it in a black color. I would make it the size of the Olympus XA. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Axtel Senan Nikon. I don't know. I don't know if that's pronounced your name. Uh, what gear do you use for street photography? Good question. Lately, I've been shooting a lot with this thing right here. This is the Voigtlander Bessa R2A, which I'm sure you guys are tired of seeing on my Instagram, right? Uh, but yeah, I've been shooting this primarily because it's very inspirational. I like it. Uh, with a rangefinder, you know, you get quick focusing, which is one of the benefits. But, you know, on certain days when I feel like shooting SLRs, uh, I will take out this setup right here. And this is a setup that I've really been enjoying lately. This is the Minolta X700 with the 45 millimeter F2. Now the F2 lens, holy crap, is killer because look how tiny it is. And it still opens up fairly open to F2. I should say fairly open, fairly large to F2. Uh, but with the 45, you're not that far away from 50 and you're not that far away from the 35 focal length. And so you get that good right in between medium. This right here, you guys, if you're looking for a camera that, and a camera and a lens combo, I should say, uh, that you wanna start off photography with, or film at least, this is the setup to get. Minolta X700, 45 millimeter F2, real core. Michael Sean, photography asks, best black and white low light film for a concert or fast paced fast -paced environment? Kodak T-Max 3200. <laughs> No, but in all reality, you know, I really do think that it's going to be a good black and white film for low light photography. It has a 3200 ISO. Um, if you don't want to wait for that, definitely check out Delta 3200. Murray Osborne 16, where did you get your name King Japes? Oh, good question. King Japes was a weird fusion of like high school nicknames and then also an NBA basketball game. In high school, some of the people there called me Japes, which is just like a longer version of just JP. I guess you could say, which is my nickname most of the time, Jonathan Progress, JP. Uh, so Japes was already a thing. And then there was this one time we were watching the NBA Finals with a couple of friends, and it was the Warriors and the Cavs, right? Go Warriors, Cavs, I'm sorry, but y'all bunk. Anyways, uh, LeBron comes down and he dunks the ball, right? And the announcer goes, King James for a nasty throwdown or something like that. And I was like, hey, that's raw King James. And then the dude next to me goes, Yo, what if it was like King Japes? And I was just like, ooh, that's pretty raw. I was like, I like that, King Japes? And that's pretty much where it came from. But I wanted to go one extra step because I'm an extra dude. Uh, the V is actually just an upside down A. So J-V-P-E-S is just J a p e s and that's where king japes comes from medication wow clever name how do, says how do i find the right camera for me uh, that's a really tough question and i think the easiest way is to first of all don't go out and spend tons and tons of money uh just trying out different cameras unless you have the money for that if you do by all means man go out there and splurge right uh, but don't fall into that gas issue that we all tend to fall into. I'd say go online, read reviews, um, you know, try to connect with people that do have the camera, ask them if you could try it out. Uh, and then, you know, try to ask yourself as well, you know, what do I want in a camera? Like one of the questions that was asked earlier about what do I want in a pointy shoot, ask yourself yourself, you know, what do you want in a particular camera? Then try to find the camera that has very similar specs to what you want. And I think that's probably the easiest way you can uh, figure out what camera is right for you. Moving forward, Josh Smith asks, what photographers are your biggest inspiration good question right now some of the photographers that i've been really inspired by are Henri Cartier Bresson of course uh, we have Paul and Julia Child that book that I showed you earlier Francis Feast uh, but most importantly Alex Webb and uh, something that I really admire about his work is that you know he does a lot of layer work I mean he shoots tons and tons of layers and if you look at his, look him up on Im uh, Google Images uh, you will see what I'm talking about there's so much dynamic to his photos and I really really look up to what he can do with scenes and you know how he composes and frames everything. So Alex Webb for sure, of course, you know, Cartier-Bresson, and like I said, uh, Paul and Julia Child right now. Robert Frank as well, I should, I should add there. Last Love Letters asks, 
Any tips on how to get to shoot more often? I'm a very busy person at the moment, but I'd really like to use my camera more. Should I just wait for when I have some time to shoot? Seriously, or do I do some casual photography now and then to have fun and eventually learn quicker? Very good question. Now, I struggled with this myself, especially when I first started shooting film, uh, especially because at that time I still worked, you know, two jobs. And something that I realized is that you don't always have to go out there uh, to travel to different places, go out to downtown to take some really interesting street photography photos. Something that you can do, though, to kind of increase the amount of photos you take daily is to go ahead and just shoot personal projects and a personal, you know, your personal life. Take pictures of your kids, your relatives, your grandparents, your parents, you know, anything that you want. Uh, and kind of just try to document them in interesting ways. Uh, that's something that I've been doing recently a lot, and I've also been trying to work on some more some more personal projects that are more meaningful to myself as well. So that's a couple of ways you can increase it, and I definitely understand, man. Busy life uh, equals not a lot of time, and in that situation, you know, just try to shoot when you can. Anytime that you can take photos, just snap, snap, and snap. Uh, like Andre Cartier-Bresson says, your first 10,000 photos are your worst. Okay, we're almost done here, two more. Heat Wave asks, what black and white chemicals do you prefer and what are your thoughts on a mono bath? The fuck, what is a mono bath? No, I'm just kidding, mono bath, eh, meh. Uh, as for black and white chemicals, I really enjoy uh, HC110. It used to be D76, but D76, um, you know, if you just compare the two, HC110 is basically, it can do the same thing D76 does, but in half the time. And to me, time is everything. And so I try uh, to use a lot more HC110 now. Uh, as for like fixer, I use Codafix, which is pretty standard. As for my stop bath, I use something called Kodak Indicator. Wilver Barrios asks, have you thought about owning another medium format camera? Number two, will you ever visit Colorado? Also, you should check out the these cameras, the Mamiya 7.2, Pentax 6.7, and the RB6.7. Answer your question is, Oh, man, I've thought about it so much. Uh, actually, one of the cameras that you mentioned was a dream camera of mine, the Pentax 6.7. Man, I've been looking for one, and if I can find one for a good price, I will scoop it up. So definitely, I've been thinking about it. I'm still, you know, kind of playing around with the Yashica mat, and uh, 6x6, man, is a weird format to, I guess you could say, compose with. Uh, so I, I really want to go for the 6.7 so I can shoot at least a different, a different format. Hi, Ate. All right, you guys, so that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. If you guys still have any questions, film, photography related, stuff like that, you can feel free to comment down below. Uh, but I wanna thank you guys for your time and also for your constant support. We hit 12,000 subscribers here on YouTube and that's a giant milestone for me because coming from 1,000 subscribers, you know, was already a giant, you know, a giant milestone for myself at that time, I guess you could say. So I uh, just wanna say really quick, thank you guys again. And I appreciate all the love and support you guys have been giving me. Uh, we are gonna be continuing on with the series called Street Photography Tips and I'm super juiced and I have a ton of ideas and new content uh, to keep that fire burning for a while. So that's coming up. Also sometime this week I'm going to try to go out and shoot that video that I originally had planned out. Uh, and yeah, that's going to wrap it up folks. Thank you for watching another episode here on King Japes and as always, Minolta Gang.